Hi everybody, and welcome to episode three of All About African Violets. Welcome back. If you're new, welcome, and I, I'm really glad you're here. I'm excited to be with you today, and it's um, I'm, I'm recording actually a little bit early. I'm recording on Saturday evening, um, kind of to test the light at this time of year and and uh, and see how that is. I, I shifted back to my first spot. I'm still learning on how to, to do this the best way and to find the best place. So if you guys have comments about that, please feel free to leave them on the blog. Somebody asked me what the plants behind me are. The one um, over here, this one, that is a spider plant, and this one, the purpley one, that is a wandering Jew. And uh, they both hang in, in the window here. This is a, an east-facing window. And uh, it's great. The plants like it there very much. They get great sunlight. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thanks everybody for all the great comments you've been leaving on the blog and on iTunes. I really appreciate that. It's really wonderful. So thank you very much. And I'm glad you're enjoying these episodes. I'm certainly enjoying doing them. So I wanted to, uh, to start today. I had a couple of questions and one of which was about pots. Last week I, I mentioned a four inch pot and a solo cup and somebody said, well, what is that? And it was someone um, who sent me a comment who's not from the United States. Well, this, here they are. This is a, a three ounce solo cup, and this is a four inch pot, an azalea pot. It's a squatty pot. It's, it's, it's shorter than the average, uh, average pot. Look at them this way again. You can see there's quite a difference. These are, um, they're bathroom glasses here in the US. They are, they're plastic cups, they're three ounces. You buy them at the store in like bags of 100 or 150 of them. And then what I do, I bought um, a soldering iron and you can get a soldering iron at the Home Depot for not very much money. And I, I poked those holes in the bottom of the cup so there would be drainage. And they work really, really well for um, putting leaves down to propagate. And also, once the babies, the baby plantlets pop up, you, once they're large enough to separate, solo cups are a great, great thing to use um, to pot up baby plantlets. You can write, write on them in a, a Sharpie and so you know what you have. And that's something that's really important. <laughs> Always write down the name of the plant. Sometimes um, you think, oh, I'm going to know what I, I, that plant looks completely different than the other plant next to it, and I'll remember which one this is. No, you won't remember. So trust me, you won't remember. So always write it down. Not so important, I guess, if you're not growing for show, but if you're growing for show, you need to know what you have, what you're actually growing. So this week has been an interesting week. I have good news about my, uh, my foot. I mentioned to you last week that I had a stress fracture in my right foot. And on Thursday, I had to go back and have another x-ray and it was clear. So I don't have to wear the charming surgical shoe anymore. So yay, I'm really happy about that. Uh, it's been a busy week here at my house. Uh, just lots of things going on. The summer is really here in Chicagoland and uh, it's really been beautiful. It's a little hot again, but nothing like it was uh, a couple of weeks ago. Oh gosh, that was brutal. Uh, let's move right into tips and treasures. I, I got stuff in the mail this week, all kinds of things, but I actually, um, I, w I wanted to share some news with you that is, that is sad news. And um, I received an email from my friend Joyce Stork and it was dated on Thursday, July 12th. And um, that it, was, it was news that Pauline Bartholomew, uh, who is the author of Growing to Show, How to Grow Prize-Winning African Violets. This is the new revised 2008 edition. And uh, this is my old one. That's how it looked for many, many years. Anyway, Pauline passed away on the 12th of July. And my friend, uh, my friend Joyce had written um, a note to someone else and then shared it with me. And she said I could share it with you. And she said that I wanted to let you know that Pauline had written to her, they were corresponding, and that Pauline had written to her last month on um, a note that Joyce had received and it was dated June 15th. And Pauline said, I want to let you know about what is probably the last chapter in my life. I had to give up Mexico because of declining health. 
I moved into a small apartment in a retirement complex in Laguna Woods. My oldest daughter is retired and has a house in the same area. She is my chief caretaker, chauffeur, and best friend. The move was just in time. I have been hospitalized twice, have a new pacemaker, and lots of new meds. Every day is a challenge to keep going. I am aiming for my 86th birthday in August. And uh, she says, I am truly blessed. I leave AVSA to people like you, meaning Joyce, uh, to keep the AV banner waving. And Joyce said that, that Pauline had suffered with COPD for a number of years and that she was very shocked to hear that, that things progressed so quickly. And I never met Pauline Bartholomew, but I feel like I know, I, I've always felt like I, like I know her. The first club that I joined, the African Violet Society that I joined, was the Ventura County African Violet Society in Ventura, Colorado. I mean, Ventura, California, I beg your pardon. And that was Pauline Bartholomew's home club. And I, all the people that I knew in the club, many of them knew her and they spoke so highly of her and they said that she had moved to Mexico. And, but she had written this great book and it was called Growing to Show. So I, of course, got a copy and, and I read it cover to cover. And I really wanted to, um, I said I would talk about some books today, but I think I'm only gonna talk about Pauline's book today because it really is a wonderful book. I think of it as the Bible, really, of, of learning to grow. It was recommended to me by numerous people when I was learning. And it's really a wonderful book. And I really recommend it to you, whether you are a beginning grower or you are a more experienced grower. Um, one of the things that Pauline wrote in her original um, introduction was, she says, this manual was written primarily to teach beginners how to grow prize-winning African violets. I hope to help eager newcomers bypass the years of frustration and growing pains, not to mention the expensive mistakes that I experienced before winning any top awards. And then she says, the manual will also benefit the grower who has advanced to respectable blue ribbon plants, but has yet to realize the thrill of winning a top award. Occasionally, I mention a few tips for the casual grower, but for the most part, this manual is for the hobbyist who is dedicated to growing African violets for competitive showing. And that's true, it is, it's a lot about that, but it's really, I can't speak highly enough of this book. I refer to it, Constantly, I use it. Um, my old copy, I'll show you, my old copy opens right up to the pre-show schedule page. Oops, I've got it wrong again. There we go. Um, and I use that every time I take plans to show, and it opens right up to it. My, my first one, my first copy of this book, it, it got wet because it was on my potting bench all the time, and it was all all ripply and wet, so I, I got a new one. And then um, uh, Pauline, my understanding is that Pauline gave uh, the rights to the book to the AVSA, and it was, um, it was updated in 2008, and it's beautiful, it's, it was put together really well. There are some great color photos in this edition that were not in the original. The original had a lot of drawings like this throughout, and, th and those have been kept, but f some photos have been added, and so of course it's really wonderful, you know, to be able to see those as well. And some of the thing, one of the things um, that I was also asked about last week was NPK. So someone said to me, could you, what is that? You mentioned it. And w I was talking about fertilizer. Um, there are if you, I don't know if you, I'm gonna see if you can see this. And to show the, that's a, a jar of fertilizer. And you can see there are three numbers there. And the numbers are 15, 30, 15. So the first number is N, the middle number is P, and the last number is K. And those are the, um, those are how the, that these, they're identified on the periodic table of elements, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So when you'll see fertilizer at the store, you'll see those three numbers. They're usually prominently displayed, 
and you can the one that was on that picture was 15 30 15. Um, you'll often see a, a pretty balanced one, maybe one that says 20, 20, 20. Um, one that says 12, 36, 14. I mean, just, just so you know, that's what the NPK that I was talking about is. The first number represents the, the, um, the percentage of nitrogen. The second number is the percentage of phosphorus. And the third number, the percentage of potassium. Now, nitrogen, nitrogen is important because it develops maximum color of, of the leaves, of foliage. It promotes leaf and petiole growth. It improves the quality of the plant tissue itself, and it influences rapid growth and increases the protein content of plants. Phosphorus is important because it stimulates early root formation and growth and gives a vigorous start to plants, hastens maturity, and stimulates formation of blossoms. And I'm reading this to you right from Pauline's book. Potassium imparts vigor and resistance to disease, improves reproductive quality, and is essential to formation and transfer of starches and sugars to the plant system. And so she says, in brief, nitrogen for foliage, phosphorus for blossoms, and potassium for general health. So I hope that helps explain NPK that people asked me about. Well, um, I use, the fertilizer that I use is Optimara. That's a brand name. They also, uh, they also grow violets. The, it's 12, 14, 12, which is a pretty balanced one, a little, a little more in the blossom area. But it's, it's one that I love and, and it works really well for me. Um, as I mentioned, um, you know, Diane Miller mentioned last week that she uses two or three different fertilizers and she changes them out from week to week. And uh, I'm going to, as I mentioned, I'm continuing to do some research into that because that's not something I've ever done. But some of the things, I, I just marked a couple of things here. Um, this is in the new, in the new copy of, of the book. This is the pre-show schedule that's set up there for those people who are show growers. That's really important and it's, it was, has been very helpful to me. I've used Pauline's um, schedule pretty, pretty much as written. I think the only thing that I, I don't do is I don't foliar feed my plants. I just use fertilizer that's dissolved in water. And there was another thing, there are, there are plenty of sections in here, and in particular, she's got some great stuff for just basics um, that, that start. If you just heard that noise, it's the air conditioner that just kicked on, and now the, the, um, the wandering Jew is gonna like flap around, <laughs> so I'm sorry. So it's still hot out enough that the air conditioner has to kick on. Um, but anyway, one of the things that, that Pauline talks about, and I think this is really important, I found it to be very important, um, I found it to be particularly important um, based on my most recent go-round with ramping up all those plants. The first episode of the podcast, I told you guys that I lost my entire collection. Well, I had ramped up to about 150 varieties of African violet, and I can't grow that many plants. It's not best for me. It's not best for the plants. I know from my own experience that I can grow about 50 varieties and grow them well. So um, it's, it's a, it's a, they're so beautiful. It's very easy to get sucked into every leaf that you take off, you put down to propagate, um, or you end up buying more plants than you than you, than you planned on because they were so pretty and you wanted to bring them home. Um, it pays to develop this habit early on in your African violet career. And it's great because Pauline talks about this too. And in big letters, she says, limit your collection. Many new growers buy more plants than they have time to take care of, to take, than they have time to care for. And they put down every leaf that breaks off. Soon their space is overflowing. One of the biggest mistakes new growers make is in adding more light stands to keep up with the number of plants that they accumulate. This only postpones the inevitable because eventually the saturation point is reached through the limitations of budget and time. Set your limit from the beginning and stick to it, no matter how great the temptation is to expand. 
Make the plants fit the space. Don't expand the space to accommodate the plants. If your lifestyle changes, you may retire, for example, you can rethink your position. If you are dedicated to growing for competition, 50 to 60 plants are the most you should attempt to care for. From a collection of that size, it is possible to enter up to 36 standard size plants in one show. It doesn't take a lot of time to attend to that number, but their needs must be met at the proper times. If time is stretched much further, show plants will very likely be neglected. Well, I found that to be very, very true. Um, I ramped, as I mentioned, ramped way up. I had all these plants and I thought, this is great. I'm gonna have all these plants and I'm gonna have a great number to choose from. And unfortunately, I had nothing to choose from because I really bit off more than I can chew. And this happened to me one other time. I was still living in Southern California and I had about 110 or more varieties of, of violet and no, no one was happy anywhere around me because if you have a, a busy job or you have a family and you have lots of other interests in your life, you know, it's, it's a job to take care of a hundred plus plants. Uh, so I learned then, but I obviously forgot and had to learn a second time that around 50 is really about my limit. Right now, I brought home from National, I brought home 56 varieties and I lost one. Remember last week when we took a look at the stands, I had there was one leaf that just didn't make it, it rotted away. So right now I have 55 varieties and most of them are leaves at this time and we'll see how that goes. But I really wanted to share this with you. It's, a, um, it's very sad news to hear that Pauline has passed away and um, I wish I would have met her in person. I heard she was a really great person and a great grower. So um, if you have a chance, this is a book to, this is well worth the money. It's not expensive. It is available on the AVSA website at www.avsa.org. Um, you, will, you will not regret this. It's a great, great resource and a great book. I really would be lost without it. As I was looking through it again today, I thought, gee, you know, I haven't really read the whole thing, you know, cover to cover in a number of years. And as I was looking for things, the things I wanted to share with you today, I was like, wow, it just sucks you right in, right in again. And it was written, she wrote it in a great conversational style that's very easy to understand. And, um, and, and, one of the things she says, which is, I think, also great, um, which was, again, in, that, in the beginning of her editions, the earlier editions, she says, um, at first reading, the processes may seem hopelessly complicated. Don't be dismayed. For the first year, refer only to the basics. For instance, fluorescent light growing is a complex subject, but the summary tells you all you need to know. So she has these, um, these sections that are, you know, the book is, is written in chapters and sections, and some of them are, are just really the basics of things that you need to know. So this is one you guys want in your collections. I think you will, you will not regret it. Now it's time to take a look at what's on the stands. So if you'll hang on for just a moment, I'll be right back. Well, here we are with a look at what's on the stands. And one of the things I wanted to show you today is, do you see how this plant is kind of tilting? It's leaning that way. It's leaning toward the light. So it's important, if you're growing under lights, to turn your plants. Now do you see, we can see the whole front of the plant. I've just turned it a little. So now it'll start to lean again that way toward the light. Same thing here. I'll just turn it, you know, half turn. Same thing here. Oh, everything's looking good. Lots of space on the shelf, at least for right now. Um, as things grow, it'll probably get a little more crowded, but that's the quick look at the stands, at what's on the stands this week. All 
Hi everybody, we're down on the basement taking a look at what's on the stands down here. I promise not to flip the camera this week. <laughs> so I'm actually going to flip the lid so that I can have both my hands free and I can get over here a little more closely. Everything is looking good here. Um, I added a little water into the, into the tray this week. Kind of gave it a little more of a greenhouse effect. And I just wanted to kind of get all the way down there to the back so you could see it. Plus, you can see the raggedy back of my basement there, which actually looks a lot better today than it did yesterday because my cousin came over and helped me clear out most of that area. And now we'll take a quick look over here at the other stand, the one that's harder for me to open somehow. Same thing here. Things looking... Looking pretty good. Nothing is uh, rotting, at least not right now. This stand is very interesting to me, or this dome, I should say. It's not, I'm not getting as much of a greenhouse effect with it. And I, I'm sure that the stuff, the, the vents are closed. But so I've never used this one before. So it's been an interesting little process. Well, that's the look at what's happening down here in the basement. I'll be back upstairs in a minute. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome back to my kitchen. <laughs> uh, remember last week we talked about this little plant. This is Witch Doctor. It's one of the plantlets that is a, actually a standard that I brought home with me from the National Convention. And it's not looking so hot. I'm going to try to move it up a little so you could see it. It is, oh, that's kind of fuzzy, sorry. Um, but there is some new growth starting at the crown. It looks like a couple of crowns actually might be trying to form. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in a little Ziploc bag and kind of show you how that might work. It's a pretty simple process. I usually I usually put a couple of toothpicks in. They'll kind of keep the plastic away. And this is a very simple process, guys, and you can make a little... If I didn't have all the leaves downstairs in the, um, in the trays, I would just pop this in a tray. But I've been very judicious about separating the plants that I brought back and the leaves that I brought back. So I'm not going to do that right now. So all we have to do, kinda, now I, there's plenty of ways to do this, but the way I find that I like the best is to just, I use these Ziploc bags, and I can pull that hard plastic down right over the top of the plant, and it's got its own little greenhouse effect in there. It's not completely sealed because there's air that can get in the bottom. Um, if you um, if you do want to try to seal it, what some people do is then just put it around the, the pot itself and then you would fold over and tape or do something like that. Some people put it in the other way and you can totally do that. To do that, though, I wouldn't. Well, I guess I guess I could put my saucer in there, put the saucer in, and just set the plant right in there. Then you can zip lock the top. So you can go either way, whichever you find easiest, and this will make its own little greenhouse effect in there. Now this is sealed completely in this version, so I would. I would either leave a little piece open here so that some air can will get in off and on, or you can always cut a hole, a little tiny hole, or poke a hole um, to provide some air, some circulating air. So I hope that helps um, give you a little idea of how to make your own little greenhouse should any of your plants need a little extra TLC. I'll be right back. Wow, everything's looking pretty good. I mean, things things are growing. Did you see how the one plant was had um, particularly? It was that one standard that had really 
leaned over toward the light, that's something to take a look at as you are checking your plants. Um, it never hurts to give you know the pots a little turn every time you you know each day when you walk by that helps keep them growing straight this works the same way if you happen to grow um, on a windowsill you want to turn the plant a little bit every now and again so that it 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 doesn't just grow one way and lean toward the light it's always going to look for the light so um, and the leaves are looking pretty good downstairs and I, I didn't give anybody vertigo by flinging the camera over to the side to this week. I'm very happy about that. And, uh, and I hope that it was helpful for you to see how I made a little, like a mini greenhouse out of a Ziploc bag. That works really, really well. And uh, which doctor's in there now? I could see that, you know, there was some stuff happening in the center. So looks like I may have, you know, it may have split, which means I will eventually have to split those apart, but we'll keep up with that from week to week and see how things go. So it's time for get the bail money ready. And I already told you something that you could be getting the bail money ready for, which is the Illinois, which is the, the national show next year, the National Convention in Austin, which leads us to keep moving forward. So I hope you're moving forward in your lives in however that looks for you. It's something that I say a lot to keep moving forward. And I don't like to get stuck in the past, which is I think why I haven't um, really dwelt a lot on the fact that, you know, I lost all my plants. That's done. There isn't anything I can do about it. But what I can do now is to keep moving forward with the plants I have. So thank you for tuning in this week. And I... I welcome your comments on the blog. I welcome um, anything, you, your questions that you have for me. Again, if I don't know the answer, I will know someone who does. And uh, I haven't heard any, um, any thoughts from you guys about if you would like to have a, a beginner's, uh, maybe, maybe once a month kind of in our tip section, really talk about um, things for beginners. But I'm thinking that might be a pretty good idea. So. Love to hear your thoughts on that. Um, if you are the po the podcast is available on Blip TV. It's also available on iTunes. And I, thanks for the the star ratings and the reviews that you guys have been writing. That's so helpful. If you do like it and you're getting it from iTunes, please leave a, a review and a star rating. It's really helpful for me, and it helps make the podcast more visible when people might be looking for it. Other indoor gardeners. So. Um, Again, thank you all for your support. I hope you have a great week. I hope your days are filled with all the things you love. Good growing, and I'll see you next time.